authors of our work, the government of France, the CRISP, uh, um, ESVD has worked very closely with us, sharing data, the Heart Institute, and it, it keeps growing. Uh, this is not the, the limit to our partnership, it's just we're trying to get things right with this smaller group of partners before we move out, and I hope we can move out to other databases. We worked with Pat Halpin's lab called the Marine Geospatial Ecology Laboratory at Duke University, um, not only because they're down the hall, but because they did all the mapping for the census of marine life and the Global Ocean Bio Biological or Biodiversity Index, the GOBI. So we wanted a platform that already existed that would make it easy for people to move from the biome to the ecosystem service information and then to, to be able to add information um, like social and economic development measures, the kinds that we see coming out of World Bank and, and other applications. So we've, we've kept it pretty simple. Uh, if you go to this marine ecosystems services.org, you'll find the basic mapper here. It's there in the middle. And what the mapper does is, uh, it, it, do you recognize this kind of map? It's the Google Earth map. It's the Google Ocean map. And so we use as right now our coarsest geographic uh, unit, the EEZ. Okay? We haven't figured out how to do these areas beyond jurisdiction yet, but as we, these studies of those areas trickling, we're going to have to do that. But we use this basic framework, which is the same framework that the Opus C map and Gobi have been using. And um, what you can do here, it's a little bit blurry for me, it's probably blurry for you too, is uh, initially, if an EEZ has any kind of valuation study in it, it lights up red. Okay? So this is an initial gap analysis of where we know about ecosystem service values and where we don't. And so you can see over here, the west coast of Africa, the west coast of South America. These are places where we don't have any ecosystem service values database. If you want to drill down a little bit more, you can choose ecosystem types. And so here we have ecosystem types like beach, coral reef, uh, estuaries, mangroves, and open water, for instance. Um, these light up yellow. So this is now a further gap analysis. You can choose one or more ecosystem types and see what we know and what we don't. Or you can search by EEZ. And the idea here was that if you're in the Cook Islands, a very small set of islands, not very many people, very few valuation studies, uh, you can look at the EEZs next to you to find out what's been done. And that's the best way of starting your benefits transfer if that's what you want to do, or just increasing your knowledge. Um, and then for the studies where we do have pinpoint data on latitudes and longitudes, if you click on the, the reference here, so I'm sure I'm using the mouse here. Yeah. So if you click on a reference down here, what it will do is it'll take you to the latitude and longitude. And in this box, what it does is it tells you um, where exactly the study was conducted, the kinds of services that were uh, estimated, um, the values. And so what we do is give you a little narrative about the values. We don't boil it down to one number. I think the, the biggest risk of um, misusing environmental valuation data beyond everything that Josh said this morning <laughs> is that you pull the number out thinking a number is a number is a number and you don't know whether you're working with net revenues and so we see all the time people adding uh, gross revenues to consumer surplus to marginal values to average values. This causes a lot of trouble. So what we try to do in this, uh, this portal is tell you a little bit about the kinds of values that are estimated here and give you a teaser about what you can find. Ultimately, we want you to go to the report. And so one of the things we've been doing is working on compiling PDFs and URLs of these reports. And one of the things that we found is if you tell a journal, and I hope this is going to be true for ecosystem services and these other journals, if you tell a journal that you're going to make these um, studies available through a password-protected login, now you're talking about maybe hundreds of people who download that, they'll give you copyright privileges to this. And so this is very important if you live in some place that's very small and remote and barely has internet access. So we're trying to make the studies available. We want people to get the studies and then use them for whatever they want, whether it's benefit transfer or just improving their understanding of these ecosystem services. Um, we have the bibliographic information and then the source. So the source is important and, and it may be something that is in one of our dead databases. So the coral reef values database from NOAA or the Consval map database the marine portion that we're now housing. 
Uh, or it may be something that's housed in one of the new databases. So it may be in the ESVD, or it may be in Gecko Server, maybe in the Cascadia Ecosystems Partner Database. We want to get you back out to those databases so you can see what they've done. So this is the value added to our partners. People will come to us, but then we say, look, this is in, in these other databases, and they've done very different things with that. Push that out to you. Um, we're working now so we can get the data pushed to us from these databases as they get new information so we can update that, um, but then push back out to the, our partners. And then the idea here at the bottom is uh, we're trying to turn this into the community of practice itself to discuss the report. So we say, you know, is this your report? Did we interpret it correctly? Have you used this and found there were problems with this? Are there things to beware? Is there some new version of this that we haven't seen or some paper that's related? So using this almost like a wiki to start talking about these valuation studies and let people communicate back and forth that way. Okay. Uh, we've been working with um, Ecosystem Commons as our community of practice, uh, and I, I want to talk more later about how we can start working with um, Ecosystem Services Partnership too. We, we didn't want people to be isolated just talking to themselves within the marine sector. There's obviously a lot of learning um, by doing, and we're very far along uh, in the terrestrial sector, and people in the marine sector need to be aware of this. The Ecosystem Commons is a, a, a website that was developed out of a community for ecosystem services. It was originally called the ACES website, but it's distinguished itself from that. We push um, all of our news and information directly to this site, and uh, we're trying to work on a seamless link back and forth between the marine ecosystem services.org and this. But you can go to Ecosystem Commons. Uh, you can log in to our website, start getting information and updates about our database. I said it. Our portal. <laughs> right away. Okay. Moving forward, um, we're working on the same kind of decision, or data submission tool that uh, Jennifer mentioned and I, and I think Sandra also mentioned. We're, we're debating right now whether we just want your report so we can read it and then figure out how we, we put this into our database or whether we let you do this and then go back and revise it. Um, at this point, we, we have more than 900 value estimates in here. We hope we have uh, the large, uh, sh large share of what's coming in and that over time it will be easy to update this and we would really like to read the report so we can also post the report as it happens. Um, I mentioned we're working to connect these more seamlessly with the original databases and partners um, to reach out to new partners in the coming year. Uh, we're going to be working on specific communities of practice within the Marine Ecosystem Services Partnership. So for instance, uh, over the coming year, um, Jana Shakarov, who is uh, the International Programs Director at NOAA's Coral Program, is actually going to come to Duke for half of the year where she's going to be building our capacity on living resources in the South Pacific, an area where we have a particular a drought of information in our database. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, it just means it hasn't been easy to find. And then trying to incorporate that directly into the work that I'm doing um, with UNEF uh, on living and non-living resources in the area. So we can bring these ecosystem services uh, to people who are making decisions, like attorneys general, who haven't heard of ecosystem <laughs> services in many of these places, but they've heard of deep sea minerals. Um, so, so that's it. Uh, as we build this, it really is, it has been a partnership all along, and, and it's very low cost, and we will build as we have demand, um, and find sources as the demand comes, but basically trying to keep it simple. Um, the, the KISS uh, approach, you know, keep it simple, stupid, and that's how we describe ourselves. Okay. So if you want to know more, uh, you can contact us at info at marineecosystemservices.org or, or please think about joining the community practice there at ecosystem services, ecosystemcommons.org. Okay. The domain, but I, I'm interested to see because in, in marine science there's the key issues like uh, genetic data and where more uh, actually exchange uh, and collaboration exists and genetic data in, in marine ecosystem well, you know, that they are technically linked. As an example, I'm thinking in all the problems with uh, the, uh, the Marine Wales Commission. 
and, and all the data that had been used to make decisions in terms of uh, you know, whales uh, hunting and, and all the you know, interests that there are there, which are at the core of the ecosystem services issues. I wonder if you, if you tackle this uh, particular issue of, okay, how to deal with, with the data that is being used by the whale commission, how to deal with all these many genetic databases that are mostly um, the ownership of different labs and it would be nice to well, and so that's that's why we partnered with the Halpin Lab because they're doing that now for the Census of Marine Life and Gobi. So they have a lot of that genetic data already. And so the the foundation behind this mapper is the same foundation that they use, and they have, for instance, whale migration patterns and whale sightings. So you can see these sorts of uh, bits of information that go from EEZ to EEZ. And our hope in the future is to be able to then create a link that if you're on this EEZ and you click on a study about whales, it will say, would you like to know about genetic information about whales and then take you right to that next portal. So it is for us, it, it's a way of getting into the data based on geography. It, it may not work for everything, but you get into the geography and then you say, what else do we know about this ecosystem, this ecosystem service in this geography? But we're not tackling the genetic part. We, what we tried to do is create a platform that was basic enough so that we could link to those databases that we're dealing with genetics. It's very political, yeah. and then we have many other ecosystem services. I think we'll have the discussion later on in the panel. But it's how we build this kind of data that are very political, that I think are at the core of the discussion we are having within ecosystem services. Yeah. Okay. Something for the others uh, to think about as well, then. I call them up on stage to take part in the panel in one moment. Maybe one more question. Uh, who you want to do? Yeah, it's, um, my question was a little bit related to that. It's like when you look at marine ecosystems, they're not as much related to uh, like the typical land use approach as the rest of them. So in, as a marine ecosystem, you're taking more populations. It's like the surfaces move around. Well, the, the habitats tend to be fixed, right? And so if you look at our ecosystems types, they're mangroves, corals, estuaries, these things don't move. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have pelagics here, but we have open water to try to cover pelagics. So there is this added dimension of movement. And you know, when we think about mapping, and, and Matt's talk this morning, we tend to think about where's the supply. Uh, we don't think about what happens when the stock moves around so much. And so that's why this is um, not a database, and it's not a GIS in the way you normally think about it. Mm -hmm. and, and so some of these studies are regional, some of these studies are for entire EEZs, and, and some of these studies are really pinpoint studies. And so we try to have a, a system that's coarse enough to handle them all. Um, but the idea is you can't do meta-analysis with this very easily. You have to pull the studies out and do it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um,